All right, guys, how's it going? Coming to you live from Niseko in Japan. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are doing well. Thanks for joining. Uh, definitely appreciate all you guys coming on to help support me and uh, the adventures out here coming out with all of our crew that we have here. Kevin Snowball Pro Camp, TJ Port Archive, David Jones, Andre Schubert, Bo Pollard, and Yannick and Arrive. We've got a nice big crew out here. We've been shredding in the powder out here in Japan for the last about week and a half and it's been uh, it's been pretty incredible we had really 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 good conditions for powder the last um, 10 days or so it has recently started to uh, be nice and sunny we are missing a little bit of powder the last couple days but especially that first week ever since we arrived it's basically been powder non-stop including some 30 plus centimeter days over one foot one and a half feet just some of the deepest deepest lightest powder that I've ever experienced in my life and definitely making use of the powder snowboards and you see behind me I have my two boards here I have the Jones Storm Chaser and the uh, Travis Rice uh, Lip Tech and I haven't actually had an opportunity to ride the uh, the Travis Rice because I've been so busy riding the, the the uh, the Jones Storm Chaser, and yeah, it's just been absolutely incredible out here. Just uh, th the deepest, lightest, fluffiest snow that I've ever seen. Face shots all day, just uh, just absolutely incredible. And yeah, I came out of here today to talk to you guys about powder, about riding powder. Hopefully, you guys are getting some powder where you are. I know there's plenty of places around the world at the moment that are getting really dumped down, including um, in the Alps, in the Pyrenees, um, out in the West Coast, in in Whistler, and, and down the West Coast, they're getting a ton of snow. I know in Whistler they've had over a meter of snow in the last few days in the last few days, in the last uh, week, and there was, uh, I think in Teen, they've had like over a meter in the last like three days. So, it's been uh, it's been super crazy powder. So, during this live chat, yeah, I want to give, give you guys some tips on riding powder from your first powder turns, going in five, ten centimeters of powder, all the way up to doing some really, really deep powder to coming out in Japan, how to set up your snowboard, what to look for with your gear, uh, how to prepare yourself and your board for the powder and uh, everything in between and if you guys can hopefully give give me some information about what you guys like to do in order to prepare for the powder um, if you guys are riding somewhere especially where you're getting some powder it'd be great to hear about the conditions that you guys are having at the moment or if you guys are going somewhere where you're going to be getting some snow or just going on a trip as well um, always good to hear back from you guys and uh, yeah again really really appreciate all you guys coming out and checking out um, this live chat, especially with everybody putting out so many videos at the moment. Um, yeah, you know, we just had all time conditions out here. TJ just put up a video yesterday about like three feet of powder. Uh, I just put up a video uh, just before you guys might have been watching it and jumped over here about actually using a snorkel, <laughs> which does seem a little bit over the top, but uh, um, believe me, it, it actually did did work. It was pretty useful, minus kind of looking a bit silly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll go through that all for sure. And, uh, and yeah, just uh, hopefully you guys are having uh, a good time. Hopefully everything's going well with you. And uh, it would be great to hear from you and uh, what you guys are up to. Just going to have a little chat through the comments and then we're going to get um, into the chat and the tips and maybe go out and see what the guys are doing. It is, uh, here's about 7.30 in the morning. Uh, nice, it looks like it's going to be a nice day out here today. The guys are planning a trip out to Kororo, which is a resort about an hour away from Niseko. It's a pretty big resort, um, bigger than a lot of the Niseko resorts, but not quite as big as Rizutsu. Rizutsu is an amazing resort, it's probably my favorite, but Hanazono, which is part of the Niseko United, is also an amazing resort, and we just had absolutely insane conditions here all week. But yeah, it's just started to light up yesterday. We did a, a different resort, Moiwa, which is like a tiny little gem. It has three lifts. It only has one high-speed lift and two, um, two, two uh, dual-seat lifts. And that was just more of a, a kind of groomer, cruisy day. So it looks like we might have left the majority of the powder behind. And we have just a couple days more riding here in Japan before I'm heading back to Whistler, where they're getting loads of snow there. So it's, uh, it's perfect. 
Um, so yeah, just gonna give a quick shout out to everybody that's out here. Thanks again for coming out, everybody. Uh, of course, L Stacker's out here. Frank coming in first. Awesome. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, uh, it was super cool to hang out and meet L Stacker. That guy's awesome. He was out here with uh, Jose Bortista and Chuck Fan. Those guys came out to Niseko. Um, a lot of them, well, two of them, for the first time out of their home countries and, and coming out to Japan. So it's quite the experience for them. And just to, for them to be able to experience what Japan powder is all about, um, it's pretty unbelievable, um, I think, for them, because it's taken me a very long time to come out here myself. So definite props for those guys to coming out here. And I'm, I'm super happy that they were able to experience the true, true Japan, Japan. Uh, boredom's here. Awesome, boredom. Great to have you here. Um, and who else we got on here? Manolo, what's up, man? How's it going? Caleb E's here. He's saying, what is going down, man? Yeah, Manolo, what's up, Chris? Hey, uh, L Stacker saying smash that like button. L Stacker, what's up, game time? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, guys, go check out L Stacker's channel as well. He just started up a channel. Uh, guys, he's awesome and uh, always willing to help support the snowboard community here on YouTube. Uh, I really like the snowboard community that we built here with all the guys that we have here. Casey Willex, of course, is out here at the moment. We've been able to ride with him a couple of days. And actually, the guys are going with them today to Kiroro. Uh, but I'm going to be taking a rest day and just a chance to help do, you know, get some more work done. Chance to do this because if I was going, I would be getting ready now and unable to talk to you guys and uh, get my uh, Patreon going as well. So uh, just to mention as well, this is a super chat. If you guys want to help support me and doing things like this, the only reason that I'm here right now in Japan is because of your guys' support helping me get out here. So I really, really, really appreciate it because it has been quite a, a life-changing experience, just not with snowboarding, but just on the whole coming out here has been absolutely awesome. So if you do want to help support the channel, then you can send me a super chat, which will get your question notice, but I uh, try to cover most of the questions anyway, but I will be getting a Patreon up today. That's my plan. So if you guys want to help um, support me, you can also go to Patreon and uh, I will start working on some merch very soon too. Jose Bortista is here. Jose. Um, hope you're having fun with L Stacker in New York, dude. Uh, it's awesome. Mr. C-Note, Liner C Spirit, getting a new board, Chris. Uh, not yet. I don't have the, uh, the all the hookups here. And actually things are a little bit more expensive in the second than they are in Canada. So I'm probably going to wait to Canada before I pull any strings on something like that. But I think the next on the list is going to be some new boots. I just got the... Um, where are my bindings? Bindings are somewhere else. Um, I was just switching around. I, I rode Kevin's Orca yesterday, so my bindings were on there. Uh, the Orca was really, really fun, but I think the next purchase is going to be some boots for sure. Lloyd Mack saying, is it too deep, Chris? It's not too deep. It's actually uh, barely like... So the, the John Storm Chaser, this is obviously, you can see the size of this nose is just massive. The bindings are way set back. This thing is just a huge nose. And I was pushing the limits on the Storm Chaser, it really was, um, I would say, struggling at times because, you know, the, the topography does change, but on some of those flatter sh sections, definitely had to be a little bit more conservative, use tracks and really try to conserve my speed and, and use the terrain and the lines. Uh, but yeah, is it ever too deep? I don't know, man. Andrew Coates saying, hey, man, it looks like a great show. Hopefully everybody's staying healthy. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's kind of tough because we are riding a lot out here and trying to push it in, in the Japan. And it is very, very forgiving, but not in all areas. So we have had a couple people pick up some niggles. Fortunately for myself, just apart from um, feeling quite tight and uh, needing to do a little bit more stretching, I'm actually doing really well. So, Andrew, thanks again for that. Jason, amazing footage from you guys so far. Yeah, dude, it's been, uh, it's you know, use the phrase, it's been all time out here. So, really cool. So happy to be out here. Uh, Ramon asking about stance angles, forward lean, four pow. Yeah, I set mine up with a little slight directional. I normally like to ride twin um, in terms of the angles, 15-15. But for powder, especially when it's really deep, I normally uh, will try to do a kind of 15 on the front, maybe a nine on the back. So a little bit directional. Um, forward lean, I just I just keep mine. I don't usually do a forward lean, or maybe just uh, one degree. But um, I try to ride forward lean. It usually just hurts my feet, and uh, I'm sure it would probably make me better if I did use it. But I don't. 
Uh, be love saying how was the rental board haven't watched the video yet yeah so just put that up um, now so don't go and skip this video to go watch it unless you're watching it afterwards but I did rent um, the Gentem Sticks XY which is kind of like the Gentem's Orca so it has a nice long rock I don't know it's got camera between the feet and then it's got a very small tail just outside of the contact points at the back with a little bit of a kick so it does give you a little bit more uh, playfulness a little bit more forgiveness when you're doing jumps landings pop than the Storm Chaser which is just a true swallowtail which doesn't really do that and of course when you're trying to do nose 180 nose butters on the storm chaser it doesn't really want to flex so much so much more playful really good float the bases on the gun temps are insane they have like crazy crazy uh, speed off the base um, in fact I would often we'd often hit the cat tracks with the guys and I would just end up flying down ahead so yeah props to gun temp for making really good boards and uh, and yeah really high end um, and in fact a few of us a few of us a few of them have bought Gentems and the price for them just the boards uh, with the case uh, it doesn't come tuned up so you have to pay extra for the tuning ends up to be about fifteen hundred dollars US so it's uh, it's not cheap it's uh, it's an investment for sure uh, Born saying hoping to hit some pow in Paradiski in the next few weeks. Nice tips, welcome. Yeah, I will get into those very shortly. Uh, hey Chris, have you guys been lo you've been loving the videos here? Could you subject a question about bindings? Binding the bindings hang over the edge about one centimeter. Will that affect the turning? Yes. Yeah, so obviously you can uh, um, change the bindings um, with the the screws where you place the screws with the mounts. You don't really want to have any overhang at all. That's one reason that I got the Travis Rice in a wide because I was getting overhang and when I was trying to do more laid out cars, really leaning into turns, then I would hit my boots in the snow and as soon as you hit the boots in the snow, you end up basically washing out, you lose all of your grip from the edge and then you slide on, onto your butt or onto your stomach. So you do, depending on how aggressive you're riding, want to have your, your board outside of the bindings so that you can always stay in control, even if you're going to be laying right down like Ryan Napton does, and in fact, if you see Ryan Napton boards, the king of carving, uh, absolutely amazing carving on that guy. He has an ultra, ultra wide board, so he can literally lay his board horizontal, uh, vertical, and uh, and still be able to, to ride. Hey, Andreas, what's up, buddy? This is my roommate and uh, dance partner, <laughs> Andreas Schubert, <laughs> and uh, he's just getting ready for snowboarding. So. <laughs> We, uh, we had a pretty crazy day last night, and he was skiing in the daytime, while snowboarding in the daytime, and also went night riding, went out for a huge Indian meal. And so everybody's a little bit slow getting up today. Kara saying, hey Chris, love the Japan coverage on the vids, keep up the great work, thanks so much. Robert saying, how's it, f how's it feel to finally make it out to Japan? Dude, it's so, so good. I couldn't have asked for a better time out here. Andreas, you have a good time here in Japan, bro? Japan's really nice! <laughs> He's gonna move out here. He literally is like, I gotta move here. It's so good. Um, <laughs> uh, Northbound is saying, Hey man, glad you're enjoying the fluffy phone. Power, my top tip is hand warmers for the powder riding next to your battery phone. Keep them going. Uh, you, he's gonna be out in Whistler at the end of the week for 10 days. Uh, nice, dude. Jose Bautista. Oh uh, man, saying, uh, Coming to the super chat. Thanks so much. Saying, No fun here. Long no snow and spring like conditions. Hashtag boot funds. Thanks so much. Yeah, I got a. Yeah, well, Jose was just in Japan and he probably had the best snowboarding of his life. So, uh, you know, a bit of sympathy, but I'm glad that you got to really, really enjoy that powder out here in Japan. And yeah, it was awesome to meet you and hang out with uh, your girlfriend and the rest of the crew. Really, really cool. Uh, okay, so I will. Uh, I'll just get into some tips. Um, there are a few questions coming in. Andre, does Andreas have German roots, says Christian Friedrich. Andreas Schubert, the most German name there yeah, is. I'm very, very German. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to go and grab my snowboards, or, or at least the Travis Rice, and go from there. And we're going to talk about some things that we can do to help ride in powder. So give me one sec. Oh, I just lost the slipper. Okay, so presumably if you guys are riding powder um, in your home 
resort or if you're away on holiday, you're not going to be riding 45 centimeters of super light fluffy Japau. If you are, then awesome for you. But you don't normally have to ride with a super swallowed out giant nose powder board like the one in the back there. You can set up a normal board um, to make it easier to ride in powder. So uh, what I have here is the Travis Rice Pro. This is a twin, so it's identical nose to tail right down right from the middle going out. So the nose and tail is the same size, everything is identical. So if you were to set it up in the kind of normal stance, the symmetrical stance, then it's going to be as easy to ride in the powder forward as backward. But when we're riding in powder, we do want to make it a little bit easier on ourselves by increasing the size of the nose, decreasing the size of the tail. And so basically what we can do is change our binding position in here, we obviously have a few different positions that we can do. Um, so instead of having it set up kind of in the, the standard stance in these holes <laughs> here, then you can actually move it back. So move your body weight back on the board. And so instead of your board just sitting normal, nice and flat when you put pressure on it, by shifting that weight back, when we're traveling this way, it's gonna naturally make the board lean back like that. And so you're gonna get a nice float in the powder. David Hello. Jones is here. Chris, have you looked at your latest video? What happened to it? You have the most clickbait title I think I've ever seen. Yes, thank you. It is GH01907. Oh, <laughs> Oops! <laughs> so clickbaity. <laughs> it's still got 91 views. <laughs> Oops. I hate clickbait, bro. I can't believe you do that. <laughs> so I did wake up early to get that finished, and then in uh, the rush of getting my thumbnail done, I didn't end up changing the title. So, whoops. I will do that shortly. Hopefully, if you guys did already see GH018354, then you enjoyed it. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to end up being something like snowboarding with a snorkel, or I had to bring, you know, something snorkel related because in that video I did actually bring a snorkel and ride with it, and it worked really, really well. <laughs> um, another thing that we can do to help with the powder, as well, apart from setting our weight back on the snowboard and talking about um, the angles, which are not totally necessary. You can keep your, your snowboard angles, your angles of your bindings, um, symmetrical if you like. That's how Andreas likes to ride it if he's riding anywhere on the mountain. I like to go from a more symmetrical stance on my T-Rise to bring my back foot forward a bit because you are normally riding mostly in one direction. But that's all about personal preference. Um, but then you can also get uh, a nice wax that's going to help glide across the powder because in the powder you really want to keep your speed. So you want to make sure your board is in really good condition. A nice fresh wax is definitely going to help you out with that. Um, and then about board choice as well. So you don't necessarily have to ride a powder board like that. I would say that this is only really useful if you're riding over 20 centimeters. Something like that. If you're running under 20 centimeters, you can definitely get away. And in fact, I've often ridden this board in 30 centimeters a foot of fresh powder up in Whistler, and I've not had an issue with it at all, even riding it symmetrically, just moving my weight around. But there is different types of boards as well, so you can obviously get park boards, all mountain boards, things like that. And when you start to move towards that all mountain um, free ride slash powder board, then you start to get a board that is going to be tapered where the tail is narrower than the nose. And by having a narrow tail and a wide nose, again, that just sits the tail down into the snow and helps the nose float, which is what we want. Because as soon as that nose starts to dip under in the powder, then we're going to slow down and potentially sink and fall. And once you fall in deep, deep powder, it is hard to get up. So you do always want to keep your momentum going when you're in the powder. And if you do have to stop, if you do want to stop, people have to stop, of course, then you want to stop either um, on a slope or at the beginning of a slope so that you can just point your board down and then start that momentum going again. So yeah, um, definitely would recommend, depending on the conditions, if you guys are renting a board, if you think of buying a board, then at least getting a tapered snowboard. Um, and then the taper can change as well. And also the, uh, the profile can help with that. A lot of the powder boards, like the one behind me, is a flat base and then the nose goes to a rocker. And really it's that rocker at the nose which is an upward slope towards the tip of the nose. And that helps that when you're going along, it just helps to push the snow under the board and keep your board nice and floaty. Um, this board here is a, a C2 profile from LibTech. So it does have a little bit of rocker and camber um, under the underneath the feet, it's kind of got a hybrid profile, but you will see um, a lot of the more getting towards old mountain boards, they might have a camber, so a, 
uh, going from down to up, the kind of that shape, um, towards the tail, and then at the nose it comes back and starts to scoop up to give you a nice float on the nose. So we'll definitely recommend seeing something like that in a lot of places that you go to rent boards, you can see what they have available and you can talk to them and tell them uh, what you guys are looking for riding and, and how much experience you have and, and what you want to do when you're out there. And I'm just going to grab my storm chaser for a sec. Okay, so this is basically taking a few things that we've already been talking about and taking it more to the extreme. So again, with that float, getting maximum float here, you can see from the insert points where our screw holes are, the nose is huge and the tail is short. And also this part, the swallow tail, again, is just helping the rear of the board sink and then that front of the board float. So if I'm riding really, really deep powder on this board, I don't have to put any pressure on the back foot more than the front foot to keep floating. It's naturally going to sink the tail and keep the nose floating. Whereas if I'm riding the T-Rice, then I have to put a little bit more pressure on the back. I do feel it more at the end of the day, and I'm sure you would too. Your back leg's going to be hurting a little bit more because as you're riding, you just have more weight, more pressure on that back foot. And so that's going to build up over the day and make your back leg more tired. So actually riding a board like this, having a board set up that is more powder specific, powder oriented, is just going to mean that you're going to be able to go longer, you're going to have better endurance, probably going to have more fun and it's going to be easier for you and you're you know you're going to be feeling better at the end of the day ready to go for the next day which is obviously important and then another thing that this board has which isn't super necessary is the uh the boat technology so there's a few board companies that do this and basically what it is is um similar to a rocker shape of board from one side of the board to the other it also has a rockered out um, shape to it so kind of like a boat hull and what that does it just helps keep you float means that the board isn't going to kind of catch under the snow and flip you over and it's kind of riding itself it's like a boat in the waves so if the boat starts to rock then naturally it just wants to even out and go nice and straight and so that's what this board does as well so it just is generally made for making riding in powder super super easy which is awesome oh all right um i think that was all the tips i had for the board in particular before we get on to the riding just gonna have a look at some of the comments if you guys have any tips that you guys like to use any questions i'm just gonna run through some for a couple of minutes and then get back into it uh <laughs> Tony Macaroni, snowboarding is awesome. Um, Mark saying, did Andreas hit the big half pipe in the sky on the long hike up the mountain? Haven't seen him that haven't seen him since. <laughs> did you hit the big half pipe in the sky? I guess that means did you go to heaven? No, I uh, <laughs> on that day I got extremely lost in the backcountry and went a totally different way than everybody else. And that video is has been trying to come out for like two days now. It doesn't want to come out. It, it does, doesn't want to come out. Something is suppressing him. He keeps trying to upload it and, and YouTube is suppressing him. Yeah, the first time uh, YouTube uploaded it, but they cut it short for some reason. So I don't know if it was their end or my end or if it was the file. And then the second time I couldn't get it to process. And then once it eventually did process throughout the day, they cut off the file again. So nice. now I'm in the process of re-exporting the file. And, but, uh, but you were in the Snorkel Day video titled GH0183345. Yeah. No, and, guys, uh, I've, I've been to every single day, but I'm not good at, like, staying with the crew and waiting for people. <laughs> so I just go off on my own adventures a lot of the time and then just sort of meet up afterwards. That, I'm very impatient. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Snorkel Day was basically Andreas and I um, in the morning just doing laps top to bottom. Boom, 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 boom. We got, like... 10 laps in, and then uh, I went to go meet up with the other guys, and uh, Andreas kept shredding the powder. So Andreas is still here, he's still going strong, he's, uh, he's ripping as ever, and he's getting ready to go off to Kororo, one of the resorts here in Japan. Uh, better I say, I'm feeling that today, we had a long weekend here, and Tuesday is the new Monday. Ouch. Is that good? That bad? I guess you have a long weekend, that's always good. Shred's on here, Shred is here, of course, um, out in the lounge, we can go say hi to him in a second. 
Uh, Reggie's here, awesome guy to have you here. California Cruisins out here. Uh, Chris, Chris Matthew says, can you ask Andreas to show us his new Gentum stick? Um, potentially, it is in the neoprene case. No, and, it's not here right now, it's at the shop. Oh, it's at the King. shop. Ah, there is uh, one in the hallway, which I believe is TJ's. Um, in the neoprene case, I wouldn't take anybody's Gentem out of the neoprene case. I'd always let them do it, but maybe we can see it in the case because the case also is really, really nice. Jeremy saying, do you have any experience with the Jones Ultra Mountain Twin? Just bought it myself. I can't wait to test it. Have you tried the Ultra Mountain or the Mountain Twin? Ultra Mountain Twin? No, I've tried a regular Mountain Twin. Yeah, and uh, good times? Yeah, yeah, it's a great all-rounder board. How do you, how do you say it compares to like a T-Rice uh, in the powder? It's it's not a hybrid shape, so it's like a regular cam rock board. So it's maybe a little bit more traditionalist. I would say it's maybe a closer comparison to something like a DOA rather than mm. a Travis Rice. In my opinion, the T Rice board's still the better board. <laughs> cool. Well, to each their own, which is awesome. But uh, Andreas has written quite a few boards. Charlie Fagan saying, and I just want to say hi and hope you guys are having fun in Japan. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, it does Andreas have German roots? People always think that Andreas is German, which he is, but he, he only knows about Connect Ruprecht. Um, evil German Santa Claus. The evil German Santa Claus, also uh, maybe known as Krampus in other uh, countries. <laughs> uh, cool, so I'm just going to ride back down. Oh, there was another super chat from Bad Riders. How is the Orca, Chris? Uh, I thought you hated, what, I don't hate Orcas. I got nothing against Orcas. I actually read, so I read the Gentem Sick XY, which I think is uh, kind of like the Gentem's Orca. Uh, very similar in profile, well, very similar in shape. Uh, big rocket out nose, very short tail, tiny tail outside of the contact point. Maybe not quite as kick. It doesn't have the fin tail technology like the Orca does. Uh, but I love the Orca, Orca was really cool. We did just take it out on a more of a spring powder day, so the powder was uh, was a little bit tight, a little bit heavy, but the uh, the carving was was absolutely fantastic on that. So it's a great all round board um, if you want to do more free ride and all mountain and powder. And that's the board Kevin's been riding every single day while we're out here from out doing cruisers to out doing 40 centimeter plus days in the powder, and he's been shredding on that. So I think the the um, Orca is definitely a good all-rounder especially if you only have one board to bring to Japan and you're not sure how much powder you're going to be getting while you're here because it can do pretty much everything. When I was saying how did I feel the first time riding the pizza box? So the pizza box lift is a single seater lift on Hanazono that takes you up to the top of the mountain to do some of the backcountry hikes there going through some of the gates. Uh, the first time I rode it I didn't let go of it. Uh, you basically jammed in this pizza box size seat with about an inch of barrier on the side holding you in and then you got the pole right there so the first time up I was just grabbing a hold of that pole and I want to like go till we get up to the top but then I think after that it was it was all good well, thanks for that uh, all right and then just a few questions at the bottom and then we'll get back into it um, Adam's here Adam awesome to have you here Adam classic old school dude love love having you out on the channel dude service paradise and hackers awesome base keep the great work thanks so much smash like from L stacker question mark smash like Hi, Adam. <laughs> Adam came out to Whistler, and I had a chance to ride with him, and he was riding with Andreas for a few days. And uh, I always love meeting people that watch the channel. Um, again, with uh, Jose Bautista, El Stacker, and Chuck Van, it was great to see them. And Adam and Manola, we saw out in Whistler a few weeks back as well. So uh, really, really cool. Always super happy to see you guys. All right. Okay. Um, so. Getting back into the writing style, so kind of cover the boards here, but then obviously you need to change your writing when you're going to be writing in powder. For most people, when they're first writing powder, they're only going to be writing in maybe five centimeters, ten centimeters, maybe a little bit more. Um, oh, well, one thing I want to talk about too is terrain choice. So when you're writing powder, you do want to have a little bit um, steeper areas because a lot of the really flat sections can be quite tough. It's a little bit harder to keep up your speed. You want to keep up your speed. If you do stop, it is a harder to, to start getting that momentum going again. So if you're normally used to riding um, like greeny blues, then maybe on a powder day you want to stick towards the blues. And the other good thing about the powder too is it is forgiving and does help you slow down. So if you want to wash your speed, if you want to get rid of your speed, then it usually is easier in the powder too. So that's always something good to do. 
but um, generally when you're riding powder you do want to have a little bit more weight on that back foot you do want to feel that that pressure on the back foot where you are kind of having that as your root of your riding uh, especially if you don't not riding a more powder oriented board where you can really keep your weight nice and centered and just try to keep everything a little bit more spaced out so instead of doing really tight turns uh, you probably want to open up your turns a little bit more and do more sweeping turns using that powder using that pressure of the powder <laughs> under your feet to help control your speed really start to feel that flow because it's when we start to go into that more surfy vibe um, and in fact my powder board was designed by famous surfboard designer Chris Christensen who has done a lot of a lot of he's done the surf series with Jones including the um, uh, what's your board's name again mind expander mind expander um, which I'm Andreas loves to ride in the powder. That's what he's been riding in the powder right here. And also the Lone Wolf um, and maybe one more. Um, so there is that crossover when we get into powder with surfing because it is that real surf-like feel because you don't necessarily feel the pressure of the snow um, under your feet the same way that you do on a normal run. It is got a lot more give um, and especially when you start to get into deep powder you do almost start to feel weightless. And so yeah, you're doing nice wider turns, you're kind of opening it up a little bit more, um, looking a little bit further ahead for what's ahead of you because you do need to keep that speed up as you're going. And then when we start to get into more um, advanced terrain, maybe we're starting to go into trees, we're starting to go into deeper bowls, then yeah, looking ahead where we want to go, managing the terrain is really important, and especially in the trees, um, very, very important to be watching where you're going, where you often have to look uh, two or three turns ahead, but also focus focusing on what's directly in front of you because you don't want to hit a tree. Um, but then just trying to, you know, nip between trees. Um, it is definitely a skill that takes a while to learn, but you just have to keep on practicing and, uh, and looking ahead. And yeah, I'm sure if you guys are learning powder, getting into it, you will have sometimes that you're going to fall and you're going to have to take off your board, take off your bindings, walk out. Um, it can be tiring, it can be frustrating, but believe me, if you stick with it, then it is absolutely amazing. With that, it's all about just uh, not going too far over your head and getting into too deep a powder. It's usually good for those first few times just to go on the powder, just on the side of the run. So you have the run going down the middle, you have some trees maybe on the side or maybe an ungroomed area with some powder on the side and you can go in, do a few turns, come back out, you know, kind of assess how that was, go back and do a few more and then as you start to step up, then you start to kind of get it more and more away from the runs until you know what we were doing out here in Hokkaido up in Hanazono where we would go to the top of the lift hike out into the powder there's no grooming anywhere in sight and we're basically just going down ungroomed steep powder trees little pillow drops open fields and then you're uh, you're just kind of on your own and you have to just kind of keep, keep going and, and managing your speed getting powder slashes getting face shots and for me at least that is the absolute pinnacle of what snowboarding is about is so much fun and uh, yeah just all the <laughs> the yipping and the hipping and the hollering that we've had to go on this week um, I think it's the same for pretty much everybody that's out on this trip too um, a couple questions here. Empix saying, does Japan have any open down trails where you can just fully enjoy the powder on a decline run? Uh, so in the Seco, there's definitely some patches where we were out riding some of these trails where it would open up into a nice big field for 100 meters or so and then throw us back into the trees. But um, especially on some of the smaller mountains, so I know in Moiwa, for instance, we were there yesterday, there's like, there's nobody there, it's like Ryan Napton's perfect place because the nerd ratio is at like zero, and if you get snow there, then literally the run is just powder and nobody is riding it, and so you just ride down the run, you can get six inches of powder, and just have an absolute blast while you're at it. <laughs> Frankie saying full sound, boys. Uh, dancing, I need pow, got six days till Hokkaido. Yeah, hopefully so. I know it's going to be dry the next couple days, but um, uh, yeah, hopefully it will come back. Marco Savas saying, which model Gentum stick do you recommend? I think it all depends on what you want to ride. I know that these guys here all got part of the fish series. Um, the big fish and the super fish. The super fish is the biggest, fishiest board that they have, which means that it's got a nose on it like this, but even bigger. The nose is huge. The board itself is about a 173. This one's a 157, and it's more than enough for me. So the, the Superfish is huge. That's what Andreas bought. And then the Swallowtail on that board um, is about 
two and a half to three times the size of this one. So absolutely massive swallowtail and basically putting that in the area of unsinkable snowboard. So uh, yeah, if that's what you want, that's great. Um, but I myself rode the XY, which is more like the Orcas, more old mountain powder board. TJ was riding the uh, the Manta Ray, I believe, which is, yeah, similar, but a little bit smaller. And so they do have that range of boards. So again, you know, it's kind of like saying what's, tell me what my favorite song is. I can't tell you. It just depends on what you guys like to ride. But if you want to go for that full floaty power experience, especially if you're uh, a bigger guy, then towards the Big Fish Superfish is probably where you want to lean because you, you're not going to sink those things ever. Um, Matt Kramer, hey, how's it going? He says, hey, Chris, of you haven't already any tips on riding the T-Rice Pro in powder? Yeah, I did cover that a little bit, but we can go into that a little bit more in a second. Um, Kimber and I saying, I wish you guys, I wish you guys, Oh, Andreas grabbing a seat. Andreas, yeah, you gonna be join in me? Here live chat. Dude, come on in. Ah. Um, then we're just covering a couple questions here and then we'll get back into writing. Um, I'll get to the GoPro 8 questions a bit later. Uh, Boredom, we're just covering the, the, the uh, powder writing at the moment. And alright. Okay, so we were just uh, covering... It's the Tree Wizard. It's me. Andreas, from the internet, welcome. <laughs> so Andreas works at Comar, he's riding Whistler pretty close to like 80 to 100 days a year. Yeah, depending on the year. This year's been a little bit less because the season had a slow start, but from what I understand, it's absolutely all out in Whistler right now. They got over a meter in the last week, easy. Yeah. Way over a meter. Um, and then, I, I know at least, I guess Andreas likes, as his favorite thing to do, is to ride powdery trees in a kind of steep but not too steep kind of medium to medium steep uh kind of area to get that flow get that cruise real surfy vibe nice laid back guys uh you can imagine and that comes through in his riding so what is it with your board and your type of riding that helps you in those conditions would you say well you know i uh i try to veer away from your regular popsicle stick shaped snowboards <laughs> i haven't really uh ridden a twin in a while it's not that i can't it's just i prefer directional boards um that, I, that's a big help eh? hey oh just totally ma making making it easier you can do more laps you have more relaxed, it's easier to recover afterwards, do multiple days in a row. Yeah, you get way more flotation, it's easier to turn the board. There's this misconception in the world of snowboards that you can't ride a directional board and switch. I still ride the majority of my directional boards in switch. Mm -hmm. Even something like the Mind Expander, which is not twinned at all in its uh, <laughs> overall shape. Although it's twin between the contact points. And yeah, I was I was landing the Gentem, um, a couple <clears throat> 180s in the powder, and also riding the Orca yesterday. Was, was they're both directional, uh, riding those switch. Um, I did notice uh, carve, trying to carve hard switch in the XY. It just caught the snow and flipped me. Ooh. So that's just something to keep uh, aware of that you uh, get you get to know the board before you really start to push the extremes of it, especially if it is directional and you are trying to carve and switch, which uh, definitely puts more pressure on the nose, which when you're riding switch, that board doesn't have. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what about for beginners? What would you say is like a, a great first few tips if you're going in snowboarding for the first time about how to plan your line going in and not get in too deep into the areas? Ooh, I'm in too deep, and I'm trying to keep all the blood in my head instead of going under. So, you, um, so they, they wouldn't do your run, Kybers, which is basically <laughs> three or four kilometers top to bottom of just ungroomed tree trails, because then, once you're in, you're in. Yeah, there's well... there's no coming out until you come out the bottom. Are you asking about, like, beginner powder day runs, or mm. beginner tree runs, or just beginner runs in general? Beginner powder-related powder, related powder yeah. like, op maybe open glades, but also just powder... In general. Yeah, so when you're on a powdered run, I was saying uh, my biggest <laughs> tip for like gladed runs is I don't necessarily tell people to like try to find bigger, wider open gladed runs. I say get yourself into the thicket of it the way that I would, but just take it slow. You know, you don't learn how to ride thick trees or technical trees uh, in one day. It takes a lot of time and the first years that I tried it, I was sort of just like stumbling around in there, grappling from tree to tree, you making hit, my I'm way. Guess, I'm guessing if you're like me, you hit a few trees from time to time. Yeah, but if you're going slow enough it doesn't matter you know you just make sure that you're uh you're 
bracing yourself with your arms. Always have a, an exit buddy, a riding buddy is always great in the trees as well. Yeah, and then the other thing is try not to focus on the trees. You tend to go wherever you focus. Yeah, so good if you're point. staring at a tree, you're going to run into that tree. You always want to be staring at the gaps between them. Yeah, use your peripherals, but look where you want to go. That's really important. I learned that the hard way from, uh, especially from mountain biking, trying to ride those real skinnies, the real skinny wooden bridges. But the same with snowboarding, where you look is where you go. So really important to keep looking in that direction. And then as we start to get towards the more advanced expert tree riding, what are your, uh, what are your tips for keeping your flow going through there? Oh, I don't know. I guess uh, I've got more of a back-footed style, so I got a lot of weight on my back foot, which really keeps the board planing up so that the board surfs really well. And then I tend to use my tail considerably to slough out extra speed. And I try to use the mountain as much as I can to dissipate the speed if I'm going too fast, which means I'll, instead of going straight down, arc over to one side or to another side, making big, long S turns throughout the trees. <laughs> and that way I'm reducing some of that overall speed that I'm carrying while still getting a really fun run and not having to slough out too much speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you start to move maybe more from those like one or two turns and then you stop and you reassess to just keep in that continuous flow where you're not stopping, you know, your speed is constant, your momentum is constant, you're always just looking forward and you, you know, you kind of like that little, I don't know, some, some kind of like pendulum. swinging pendulum where you just keep that flowing all the way through and that's, I think, really what you want because that's when you start to feel one with uh with the mountain and and uh yeah i think it's it's cool because you do start to feel like that kind of insignificant speck on the mountain where you are part of this kind of bigger thing that you're just really enjoying uh what the mountain is and what it has to offer and rather than focusing specifically on your riding um you're just enjoying the moment which uh i think is is was kind of the turning point for me personally mm -hmm. Um, hey, have you guys any specific questions for Andreas? Um, Andreas, your jacket. Never uh, gonna get zipped up. Never. Never sure? gonna let you go. Never gonna. Uh, are we gonna wait for David to break the news? <laughs> David's, David's gonna break the news. What are you talking David's about? David's gonna break the David's news. David's full of <laughs> baloney. There's no video footage of me without with my jacket undone, and therefore I wouldn't believe anything that David says. So I guess or depends, this guy, for that matter. It depends on what you can prove in in a court of law, but we do have witnesses of Andreas saying, not, we not, none of us saw it, but he said. Yeah, I have witnesses of aliens, did. all right? I have a witness that says let's you're a reptilian, it, all right? Let's keep it on powder. Let's keep the aliens out of it for now. Guys, Chris is not <laughs> human. But uh, <laughs> the other day it did get really cold. We were riding Rasutsu. It was crazy powder all day. I know at least for myself, my neck warmer and my whole uh, collar, my jacket just froze into one huge piece of ice and my Beard. My face was just red and caked in, in snow. Um, Andreas was doing a couple laps by himself, and when he came down, he said, I don't know if it was in jest, but I he did his nothing. jacket up. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, snowboarding, am I right? Um, but yeah, Andreas did his jacket up, so that's the big news for today. I never did my jacket up. Chris doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, and uh, yeah, it's just um, baloney. Uh, powder bi uh, bindings. Do you think that, how much do you think the now, so the now, you're writing the now. I use the now drives. I use the now drives. Kevin, Kevin uses Kevin the now drives. Drives. Granted, we all use them because of, I think, because of your recommendation. Yeah, man. I love the now bindings. They're designed in Whistler by JF Pelchat. And they have the skate tech technology. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that helps with something like writing powder? Yeah, I just feel like it gives you way, more, way better response edge to edge, <laughs> you know? You really can feel the binding go back and forth and back and forth and that gives you that instantaneous response because it drives all of your energy directly to the edges. So instead of, you know, having all that driving force come from the center disc, now you're getting direct pressure directly to your edges because of the skate tech technology. Sounds it's hard to fancy. explain. You have to sort of see their little, like, moving diagram on their website, but <clears throat> you should check it out. Yeah. Well, um, I like them. I, w I wouldn't say how much I can feel that, but I'm sure it has helped. It's because you haven't switched back to your old bindings yet. I haven't switched back, and also, we've just been riding ultra deep powder, and it's that Japao super light powder, so it's not the same feeling that I'm used to anyway. It's not like for like with it, so maybe if I go back, ride Whistler with uh, my old bindings and with the new bindings, I can have a more detailed explanation of that, but I really love them. They're fantastic, and... <laughs> Uh, what are the other guys writing? Do you remember? We got <coughs> TJ on the unions. Yeah, TJ's on the <coughs> union atlas. 
And Bo, Bo, I think is on unions. They're on unions. So is David. I just don't know which ones. I think they're either like forces or flights or something. Nice. Oh, L Stacker's here, by the way. Oh, hey, L Stacker, what's going on, Let's bro? Get, game time. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Boredom loves the Skate Tech Jones. Oh, the Skate Tech Jones bindings. Yeah, so Jones are also using the Skate Tech. It's, it's under the same umbrella, Nidecker mm -hmm. um, corporate companies. So uh, they do share that technology, which is really cool. Bad writer is saying, how hard will it be to go back to Worcester, guys? I think we're being uh, eased back into it by nonstop snow the last like week. Yeah, and I don't think also, it'll be hard at all. <laughs> like, it won't be the same quality of powder, I'm sure, because it's just uh, it's another world out here. That's why they say, you know, Japan is the best snow in the world. But it's going to be deep. There's going to be a lot of it. We're going to have way more coverage. We're going to be in full winter mode. The Alpine will be open. You'll be able to do your, your run. I'll be able to do Kyber's, guys. He, he does this run all the time. It's it, the only run I do. It's, it's off the back side of the peak chair. Ask and it, Adam. And, and it goes all the way down to the base, but it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> it basically drops off, and it doesn't go near any of the groomed runs. It just it does its own thing, and you've not been able to ride it this year. I know. I haven't been once. Which uh, kind of goes to show what a slow season that we've had, but it's picked up a lot. Is it still snowing over here? It is not snowing. It's not snowed for about 36, 48 hours out here. Um, it was snowing nonstop basically from start to finish since we got here, minus the nice day that we had at Biote. But it has got a little bit dry, which is one of the reasons that I'm taking today off. Um, so, yeah, you know, we can't have snow every day. But we have been really, really lucky while we've been here. Uh, Evolution Preparation Physique saying, eh, some of you guys have tried the Yes 2020 board, Big Konnichiwa guys, by the way. So, yeah, Andres has tried it in Whistler. TJ has tried it out here in uh, on Hanazono in a 40 centimeter day. And you had fun at, in Whistler on it? Yeah, it's important to note that TJ tried last season's version of it versus <laughs> the version that I've tried was the 2020, which was completely redesigned. They've completely redesigned the powder hull. Um, oh, so he didn't have the, but he had the, he didn't have the big V. He had the circle? The powder hull that TJ rode went all the way out to the tips versus ah. the powder hull that I rode only has the pocketed powder hull where the surface area and the tip and the tail still return back to the overall base. So just to tell you guys, you guys should go check out the powder hull from, the, from Yes because it's really cool. But on the top of the nose here, this board is uh, actually scoops the opposite way of what the powder hull does. So this is like a boat where it goes like that across the board. The powder hull kind of goes that for a little bit and then, you know, 10% in, it does the opposite and it creates an inverted hull. And that idea of that is to really use the, use the snow, use the wind, use the pressure to create this pocket that pushes up on the front of the snowboard and give you extra float and also help the tail to sink. And uh, I'm talking from uh, TJ as well, writing last year's inferior one uh he really liked it even even though it's a little bit small for him he said he would have liked the bigger one writing 40 centimeters of powder he uh he still shredded and then the other bonus of that is that you have that more twin free style uh board that you can take out in the powder as well so you gotta do a lot more switch tricks take off switch land switch butters and spins things like that it's like the only uh, true twin powder board and also uh the less less swing weight so it doesn't have a true core going through there it's an epoxy um so there's not as much weight on the edges of the board more more the weights in the middle it's not a, a, a heavier board but it just takes that weight and pushes it towards the middle reduces the swing weight and makes it easier to spin and also easier to whip around and do turns and things like that. Uh, definitely one of the more revolutionary boards that's coming out at the moment in the snowboard world. Yeah, definitely more high concept. Oh yeah. But it works, creates natural uh, lift in the front and natural draft in the tail. Nice. Chris Heinrich is here. Chris, glad to have you out here. Uh, Jake saying, did you guys do a bunch of weather research for Japan or do you guys just uh, go to the end of January? So the guys had come here a few, two years in a row before this, and so they had an idea of when they wanted to come based on that. Um, obviously we had to book it ahead of time, so we just picked the time of year that we were hoping it would be best. On the build up to it, I wasn't very good out here. People were saying it's the worst season here in 40 years. And uh, when we were coming out, I don't know about you, but when I was coming here, I was looking forward more to the culture, more to coming with my friends, and wasn't expecting anything from the snow. And then we just got 
Like, I couldn't believe how good the snow has been. We got hounded. We got, we got so lucky. That was our lottery ticket for the year, mm -hmm. for sure. It came up, uh, came up with all the winning numbers. So I think uh, coming out here, it's, it's always good to do a little bit of research, but I think the most important thing is to just spread out your time a little bit more. Don't come out for a week unless you have to. Um, come out for at least 10 days to two weeks because then that gives you a chance for a couple of storms to come through. Um, because if we came out this week and not last week, then yeah, we wouldn't have had the powder that we've had. But uh, it is always a little bit of rolling the dice, so. <clears throat> um, Super Hannah saying, please let us know about the Gentum stick, deciding between that or the Orca. Yeah, I will. I'm, uh, I'm gonna do a full review back home in Whistler when I get there, but uh, definitely after the live stream finishes and not before, go check out um, my snorkel riding video known uh, right now as GH018345 um, because I forgot to put in a title, but it will be called something like um, snorkel snowboarding with a Gentem or snorkel snowboarding, something like that. The pictures of me with a snorkel and throwing up like a 30 foot powder cloud because <laughs> the powder was so light and fluffy. Uh, Christian Friday saying Big White is dumping too. Love snow in Europe. Well, I heard in uh, when they sing in uh, Yannick was singing in Teen, they had like a meter in like 72 hours. So I think uh, they're getting some. And I heard also in Andorra and the, the Pyrenees, they're getting really good snow at the moment as well. I want to go to Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> They're having like a whole like climate yeah. climate get, disaster over there. Yeah. They don't know what to do. They had to so get like the, the military out to help clear the roads. Yeah, there's like pictures of cars being fully engulfed in snow. <laughs> People buried. Fishermen are buried. <laughs> Uh, Dan is leaving. Glad to have you here, Dan. Hopefully, you guys, hopefully you go check out the video uh, later. Joey Falcon, um, have a good rest of your day or night. I'm out for now. Thanks for live streaming, Chris. Yeah, it's just the start of the day. We have the day ahead of us. The day is uh, but a bud rising out of the soil and ready to bloom. And uh, you're going to go have fun in uh, Kirora. Yeah, i got to go get ready soon. Nice. No problem. We'll go as soon as you can. Um, your angles for Japan? What do you ride? Yeah, guys. So I ride a fairly even twin stance. I ride positive 18 in the front and negative 18 in the back. And I typically ride most boards at reference stance, which is where they're designed to be ridden. And then I go from there. If I feel like I need to go further back or further out, then I will. Um, but I like riding a centered 18-18 stance because it allows me to ride switch really easily but riding um the uh the the the, 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 <laughs> the stance where it comes at um in terms of the spacing on something like your board the mind expander mm -hmm. is going to give that a natural float as opposed to if you're riding a more twin slash um maybe not as much of a directional board as that then you can always set it back as well where it's yeah if i were riding a twin if i was riding like a t-rice for example i'd probably set it back in these conditions yeah and in fact on some of the days i would have probably maxed out as the setback on the twin on the the t-rice uh mpeg saying the powder looked insane out there waist deep i had shoulder deep for a bit just going down boom getting powder hits just coming off the shoulders psh, psh, psh. <laughs> so that was really cool it was, it was crazy um yeah uh, learn any new Japanese words? I did learn some, but uh, I can't think of them right now. Any for you? Uh, let's not butcher their language any more than we need to, Chris. Perfect. Any uh, female <laughs> powder board suggestions from Kaz? Yeah, so you could either get yourself like a smaller version of the Mind Expander. They make Mind Expanders now in smaller sizes for ladies. You could also look at something like the Stick Shift by Burton. That's a really nice powder board. The Orca they're doing in a, a yep. short size. Yeah, you can buy an Orca and a 147. And we see a lot of women like riding, I see a lot of women riding shortened flagships from Jones, things like that. Yeah, there's women's flagships. Um, yeah, there's specifically a women's flagship by Jones, and there's also the Pillow Talk by Solomon. Mm. Yeah, that's super popular. Nice. Uh, all right, uh, Randy Marsh saying, seen a new Travis Wright Dark Matter oh, movie. Oh, it's so we, good. We, we just we all it's got around so and watched that good. the other day. So every time at night, because people are releasing movies uh, all the time, we have about six six people here that are editing and putting out movies so every night there'll usually be about two or three movies to watch and so everybody gets around we'll sit down and watch each other's movies which is a very wholesome thing to do and i think it's a great team building exercise mm -hmm. and then also throw on something like travis rice's dark matter video um crazy some insane lines i definitely recommend checking it out and then the the cool kind of uh 
I wouldn't say, uh, well, whatever, they, they have him doing his line where he's not there, but uh, you can see the line go, just going down and powder shooting out uh, without an actual person there. Um, filmed to look like it's at night, um, and yeah, it looks really, really cool. So yeah, if you have the opportunity, go check out the Travis Rice Dark Matter. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Show a snowboard's flex, Andreas. You're the dude. Oh man, oh. I think everybody loves it when I do those. Uh, yes. When I do those lean-ins and pops out. Yep. Yeah, in uh -huh. the shop. We don't really have the space here, but maybe next time. Uh, yeah, great to have El Stacker here. He just got back uh, to the states, but he's out with uh, Jose Bortista, Jose Bortista's house. Yeah, dude, props uh, to El Stacker for coming out and riding the Chapau, dude. It's so awesome to see you. I know everybody here absolutely loved you guys coming out, uh, so that was a real treat for sure. And Pigs Rise 1818 as well. Nice. Dan's gonna miss us by a few days. But I just wanted to shred with Comores oh, and Wizards. No. Oh, well, that makes me feel a little bit left out, but... I'm bummed for to you, you too, Dan. <laughs> um, and from uh, Little Firefly Munchie, question, what do you guys think about the ride Kink? It's very board. soft. It's a great, like, park, jibbing, urban kind of board. Um, why, uh, Chris Hendricks got a hashtag wholesome fun. Thank you, Chris. Uh, pleasure to have you out here. Um, again, uh, another great guy that we met last year. Came out here with his family. Uh, super nice dude. And uh, helped out with the uh, Snowboard Pro Camp website, which is uh, really cool. North Badger uh, with a super chat saying, Has Japan, Japao, made Andres' zip no. up his jacket yet? He No, he did. North Badger is true. He did. He did it up for two laps. I'm going to push you off your chair again, Chris, if you keep <laughs> spreading these rumors that aren't true. They're not true. Guys, we find have, footage. We have, we find have. footage of me with my jacket done up. Otherwise, Chris is a liar. He's a liar. Wait, we're going he's up here. He's lying Shh. to you. See, look, he's trying to drown me out with his lies. We have, f David has footage of him admitting to it. I haven't seen this footage. <laughs> And that will be out in David's. I'm gonna go get ready for video. snowboarding. I hate you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I'm just uh, we're gonna take this on the road a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can can't get anybody to uh, to talk about their tips. Um, I kind of give them a little bit of time to get ready, but people are getting ready, and I don't want to hold them back from doing that. Um, but if they are free, then we're gonna check them out. <laughs> Guys. Game time! Look at this. People eating, getting ready. Yannick, practicing his skate. His fingerboarding. David's fingerboard. $500 Dude, fingerboard. Is it $500? Yeah. Oh my god, don't touch it. <laughs> and the wrap. Ready to go shredding. Ready to go shredding. What are you guys? I have a quick question for you guys. So, so you guys, um, you know, you're not uh, professional snowboarders, but you are uh, semi-professional. You, you're pretty advanced no. to be able to do the stuff that we've been doing. What are your, Just, what are you, what are you, some of your tips for somebody that's getting into some of that more advanced terrain? Bend those knees like a lot. <laughs> Squat. Picking lines. Lots of yeah, picking lines is super important, uh, especially when you are off piste and middle of trees. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, can't, I wouldn't say we are as fast as you guys, but... Some of the terrain uh, you're doing is pretty, uh, pretty hardcore. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, but yeah, you just gotta practice, a lot of practice. So yeah, you just get there, just keep doing it. And, and say not getting frustrated. That's the most important thing. I get frustrated uh, a lot. Um, so it's just he, try not to be frustrated. It, it makes it easier. <laughs> These guys, they got they got stuck in a few holes. You know, there's some holes around. Yeah. Uh, there's some dips and little <laughs> got little you know cracks and not you know little bits where yeah. if you don't if you get into them you're hiking out and they were deep. Deep, super deep. <laughs> so deep. deep. Any tips super for deep. getting out of holes? Uh, first tip: don't get into them. Okay. Yeah. Avoid, avoid them. them. Yeah. That's where reading the line becomes very important. So. Follow those tracks. Uh, okay, so get out those uh, holes. <laughs> get out the holes. So, okay, get out the holes. So either you do pizza roll, so that didn't work for me. So the pizza time. roll. You guys are wondering what he's talking about, the pizza roll. You gotta pizza roll yourself out, which just means rolling yourself out. Uh, that is a whole other thing about the body position that you start in and the body position that you wanna finish in. It's a whole other thing. It's a whole thing to get out of the holes. 
<laughs> Kevin, uh, Kevin, make a toast. Making bread. I got my lunch, three PB and jelly sandwiches. We say having a good breakfast is important for writing powder. One of these is my breakfast, yes. <laughs> Eating is an important thing. Yeah. Eating is important. <laughs> okay. You gotta have a good breakfast. Having a good breakfast is also very, very important. Yeah, they just TJ, a um, question. What is your favorite board that you've ever written in powder? And how important is it? With board choice, writing powder. It's very important. Um, a lot of factors go into it. The terrain, the uh, the texture in the, of the snow, the depth of the snow. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I could pick a single favorite, but recently uh, the 158 Mind Expander, I really, really enjoyed. Um, that that board was super fun. And he just got a big fish. I get him. I haven't ridden it yet, though, so that one will probably be my new favorite. We're gonna go look at it right now. Uh, yeah, there's one over there. It's not mine. Okay, okay yeah. that's Bose. Oh shit. Uh, cool. Yeah, so. These guys, these guys are leaving right now. Bumblebee, um, big bird has just gone by. <laughs> I don't start the car, I'm in my slippers. <laughs> so if you guys are running the Gentem stick, we have the Gentem stick right here. Look at this thing. It's up. I'm gonna move this, get the bread out of the way. Okay, so massive swallowtail on here. Uh, just to give you an idea, I got big hands. It's bigger than my hand. And beautiful, beautiful made neoprene custom case. Wow, what a beautiful case. Nice case. <laughs> All right, what's uh, what's our letter for the letter of the day, Big Bird? Uh, B. B for um, boarding. B bird. Bumble. Bumble. Baloney. <laughs> Baloney. Perfect. Thanks. All right, and our number of the day is uh, 71, which is the amount of people we have on here. If you guys want to smash that like button, that would be awesome. Um, definitely check out TJ. Just put up a three-foot powder day in the 2020. Yes, check it out. It's one of my favorite videos of the trip. It was so much fun. Chris is in it, too. I'm in it. Uh, but, yeah, so they... People were asking before about writing the 2020 in deep powder, and he loved the 2020 in like three wrote three feet of snow. It was, the deep it was at least uh, it was definitely way way over uh, our our knees up to the waist, thigh deep. Thigh deep yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was pretty full on. Um, okay. Uh, super chat here from Kim Sun Lim saying great purchase. Andreas Olenjoy Kiroro hashtag support. Thank you so much, Kim. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate the support. <laughs> oh, David, what's up? I'm still live streaming. Oh, word, word. Yeah. I just came to say hello, David. Hello, everybody. What's your tip for writing powder? Powder. In, in a ten-second answer. Oh man, um, you just, you just gotta do it. I need to get ready. Cool, good answer from As Don't lean backwards, you wanna feel like you're going through the powder. But yeah, I think uh, his first tip also was really good too. You just gotta do it, you know. Sometimes you just gotta get out there and you just gotta do it. You gotta be ready to fall. You are gonna fall. It's gonna happen. You're gonna have to dig yourself out. You're gonna get really tired. You're gonna get sweaty. It happens, but at the end of those days, you're gonna be absolutely loving life, hopefully, and it's gonna really help you out in the future. Um, powder writing is like a different experience than writing normal powder, normal powder, normal snow, where you do feel like, almost like you regress because you are doing something totally new, totally different, and so that's how you have to think of yourself, that you're not taking what you already know, um, although you are, you are, but you are almost starting like a new chapter, so be ready to be doing some hard work, but the rewards, are definitely worth it. What do you do? You say park, park or powder? Oh, oh, DJ. On the live chat, oh, there's no redo. He messed up our handshake. Dude, um, park or powder? I know this is the question everybody asks, but we're here in Japan, obviously powder. Yeah, powders, powders the answer. What uh, about what about the, the best answer. park you've ever ridden against that powder that we were riding here the other day? I would take the pow because you got log jibs, you got cliff drops. I mean, you can, make, you can make a park out of the powder. But yeah, go somewhere where you can do both. 
He's uh he's from North Carolina. He was growing up right in park all the time. So on the ice coast. So he's uh he's a, a grown up park rat. Uh, whereas um, I I do like the park, but for sure powder powder is where it's at. Um, all right, I'll get back into a few uh, things here. Yeah, board of vicious rumors about the jacket that uh, you'll you, you'll see it in David's video for sure. Uh, he admits to it. <laughs> Um, all right, just scrolling down. I'll start saying hey to everybody. Finley J uh, Juicen saying is a war pig good for powder? Yeah, I'd say the war pig is definitely good for powder. It's, it's kind of falling into that orca um, kind of range, and I know the orca is really good. Uh, nobody here has the war pig or any of the pig series. Um, the mountain uh, pig also would be a, a good choice, I think, for the powder. But um, yeah, if you can ride it, just you know, set it back if you have to, a little bit, and the uh, insert points. Uh, set back your stance a little bit. It's going to make it a little bit easier. Dan is asking, Chris, do you get a day to hit up Niseko ramen potato foam? You got day off. Oh, you've got the day off. Hit up Niseko ramen potato foam. I don't know what ramen potato foam is. 